in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this prime cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you want to learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. If you want to skip the intro and get right into the video, there are chapters linked below. So I'm going to show you how to make this prime drink cake and I'm the old lady. I never even heard of it <laughs> until a couple weeks ago. I was listening to Preston and Steve. It's a local podcast. They're local to Philly. It's my favorite podcast. You got to check them out. But anyway, they were talking about how the kids are going crazy over this drink. Apparently Mr. Beast or someone on YouTube made it and it's so hard to find. And a week later, I got a request to make this cake. I am starting with my cakes already baked, filled, iced, and they are in the refrigerator waiting to be decorated. I have videos showing you how I bake cakes, how I fill them, how I ice them, refrigerate them, make the fondant, make the icing. All of that is going to be linked in the description. And I will also link below any of the tools that I use and any other videos that I reference. So let's get started. We're going to start by covering the cakes with marshmallow fondant. I always make marshmallow fondant. I don't like to use store-bought fondant. It's too soft. And I add a little bit of Tylos powder to the fondant. Um, I already put it in here, but I, so I'm not going to add any more. But maybe like a quarter of a teaspoon to that much fondant and just knead it in. And you see these lines in the prime bottle. We're going to add those to the cake. So I'm going to knead the fondant. I soften that up in the microwave to make it a little more pliable. And let's sprinkle down some cornstarch. Use cornstarch, not powdered sugar. Powdered sugar is going to make everything sticky. So I want to roll this out wide enough so it can cover a five inch cake. Use my fondant smoother to smooth out any air bubbles. I got the cake out of the refrigerator. That icing is hard and solid. I'm not going to mess it up. I have a little bit of piping gel and a paintbrush and I'm painting the sides of the cake. And once I get a nice coating on there, I'm going to dip that in some water and thin that piping gel out a little bit. And just use a dry paper towel to soak up any moisture. And then I'm going to lift that up and put that on the cake. And let's cover this with fondant. So when you're covering smaller cakes, you get more wrinkles. So you have to be careful. Do you see how I'm working in little sections? Pull it out, smooth it down, pull it out, smooth it down. Do you see how wrinkly it is there? I have a video where I go into full detail on how I cover cakes with fondant. And I will link that below for you. So now I have that all down. And I'm using my fondant smoother to push the fondant down to the board, cut off the excess, and then let's start to smooth this out. So I'm dipping some fondant in, a corn, in the cornstarch and smoothing the fondant with a piece of fondant. Now I'm using my pinch technique to get a sharp corner. You don't want to pinch too hard. I'm just pulling that fondant together so I don't put any fingerprints in there. And then let's smooth that again with a piece of fondant. Really helps to smooth it out. And let's cut off the excess with a pizza cutter and remove that. Then I want to take my palette knife and just smooth out that cut. And now my stupid hands in the way, but this is four and a half inches tall. So I need to make a mark at one and a half inches and three inches. So they're equidistant. And then you see that dotted line that I created. I'm using that curved part of that Dresden tool and I'm just connecting those lines going all the way around. And do you see how I'm working in small sections here? Um, just connecting each dot to the next one. And then once I have it done, I'm just going to deepen that line that I made. And you don't want to push too hard. You don't want to poke a hole through the fondant. That's why I'm using the curved end of that Dresden tool. And then again, I'm rubbing a piece of fondant on the fondant just to smooth that those lines out. That looks good. Let's put that back in the fridge. Now you see this blue here. I'm using sky blue, Americolor, and we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to speed this up so you know what I'm doing. I'm covering a seven inch cake with this blue and let's use my fondant smoother to smooth it out and get that out of the fridge. I'm cleaning the icing off of the cake board before I put the piping gel up the side of the cake. Then I'm going to thin that piping gel out with some water. And then I want to dry any water that's on that cake board before I lift that fondant up and put it on there. And the bigger cakes are a lot easier to cover. They get a lot less wrinkles, but just remember work in short sections and just do this slowly so you don't get any wrinkles as you're getting that to cover the cake. And then again, using my fondant smoother to press it down to the board, using my pinch technique to get the sharp edge. You know the process. 
And using the piece of fondant to smooth out the fondant. It just contours to the cake. That's why I like to use fondant to smooth fondant. And again, my stupid hand's in the way. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I was that that one was four and a half inches high as well. So what I did, I divided four and a half by three. So I could have three equal sections on the cake, and that's where I made the marks. So I'm just connecting those lines, deepening those lines, and then taking a piece of fondant to smooth those lines out. And that looks good. Let's put that back in the fridge. Now I have a piece of non-slip pad underneath my cutting board so it doesn't slide around, an X-Acto knife with a wet paper towel that I can keep wiping it on, a Dresden tool, and a little bit of water. And I printed this out the size I wanted it to be. So I measured the cake where I was gonna put these and I printed it out the correct size. I rolled out some white fondant. And again, it has this gum text powder, Tylos powder. It's all the same thing. I need a little bit more into that fondant and then uh, roll it out, let it sit for about 20 minutes before you start to use it and it's going to be stiff and easy to use. Do you see how the lettering has like a shadow on it? It's not just outlined in black. So we're gonna do a shadow instead of just outlining it. So I put the paper on top of the white fondant and I'm using my Dresden tool to trace all of the letters on there. Make sure you get the center pieces as well. And you don't wanna press too hard because you don't want to poke a hole through the fondant. You just want to transfer the line on here. So this is my trace cut and smooth technique. This is how I make all of my decorations for my cakes. And once that's done, you can peel it back and you can see the letters transferred. Sorry about my big head being in the way. <laughs> but you want to make sure that you always cut the center of the letters first. It's so much easier to cut the center pieces and smooth them out and then cut the rest of the letters out. So anytime I cut anything out of the fondant, I'm going to take my time and use my fingers and my tools to smooth my cuts, realign that back on top of the picture so it's in the right shape, and cut the rest of the letters out. Now I'm going to do this off camera, but I'm going to gently remove those letters off of here and set those aside. And I have some thin black fondant, again, has the Tylos powder mixed into it. And I'm going to trace these letters onto the fondant. Now you don't have to trace the center pieces. I did that by mistake because this the white is going to go on top of the black. So just trace all of these. And again, you're going to, you see how the center of the P and the R, you can see the black. So we're not going to cut the center pieces out of the black because we're doing the shadow. So I don't know why I had to retrace that J, but I did. <laughs> and then I'm just cutting the rest of the letters out. And again, see that A, I'm not cutting the center piece out. And the same thing for the O, keep the center piece in there. And now I'm tracing the eight. So I'm doing a blue eight with a black background. So make sure you trace the center and the outside. And then same thing, cut the center pieces out, smooth the cuts, and then cut the rest of it out. And then I'm just tracing the outside of the eight onto the black fondant so we can get the shadow. And smoothing my cuts like always. And you see how I'm going to offset that to give like a little shadow effect, right? Because the black is sticking off to the right. So I'm going to get a little bit of water behind here. Make sure you don't use too much water. You don't, you don't want the water seeping out underneath. So just enough to make it sticky and then offset that over to the left. So the black is sticking out to the right. And let's realign that. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of the letters. So I'm putting the letter a little bit off to the left so the black is showing on the right. And then smoothing them out, making sure they're in the right position and realigning them back on the picture. And that looks good. Let's set those aside. So now I want to stack the cake. I want to find the front of the cake, which looks most symmetrical. And that looks pretty good. Going to mark that with a marker and I'm going to stack the cake. So I have my sewing ruler. I'm measuring how tall these straws need to be. I'm marking with a marker just past the end of the ruler there. And then I'm going to cut that marker off and throw that part away and stick those bottom pieces into the bottom tier. 
and I want to make sure that this is level and I'm washing my hands. I always wash my hands. I'm constantly washing my hands. You don't see me do it all the time, but I do. <laughs> and I'm getting some buttercream down and then I got that out of the refrigerator. That, that cake is solid. I'm not going to mess it up. Let's put that on top. I want to make sure that it's level and it looks like it needs to lift up a little bit more in the back. So it wasn't level. So I'm lifting that cake up. I'm getting a little bit more icing in the back and then sticking it back down. And then let's try to make sure that this is level and that bubble was in the middle. So now I'm going to dowel it. And I have a video where I go into detail on how I stack cakes and I'm going to link that in the description for you. But I doweled that into the cake board and then I'm filling that hole with some buttercream that will be uh, covered by the drink on the top. Now I'm gonna make the borders. I have this clay gun with this little round disc here and I'm going to lube this up with a little bit of shortening and I'm trying to get my pinky finger up in there, but I have big fingers, so it's a little difficult sometimes. Roll out this fondant. I put it in the microwave to warm it up and I'm squeezing this out of here. This is a, a forearm workout, man. <laughs> so you have to push the top with one hand and then squeeze with the other hand. And I sometimes I hate using this thing, but I do love it. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get really thin borders. So I'm doing that for the white and again for the blue. And now I'm see the that was the front of the cake, so I turn it around to the back. That's where the seams are going to go, and I'm getting a little bit of piping gel across the seam, and then I'm sticking that down on the piping gel, wrapping it around the cake and where it meets in the back. Cut it and press the seam together so the the seam is sticking on that piping gel that I put down. And I'm going to do the same thing on the tops here. Cut it where it meets, press it together, and then push my finger down and pressing that against the cake. And that looks good. Let's put that back in the fridge. So now we're going to make the sugar. I'm going to put my burner on high, put one cup of granulated sugar and one cup of water in there. And let's mix that together. And you just want a one to one ratio of water and sugar. So I'm going to bring this to a hard crack stage. So I have this candy thermometer. It has a clip on the back. I can clip it to the saucepan and put that bottom part in there. And I'm just going to let it sit and come to a boil. While I do that, I have a sharpened wooden dowel. I marked with an edible marker where it's going to stick down into the cake. I have this styrofoam block here and I'm going to stick this down in there once I have the sugar on it. So it's going to be easy to store. I have some gloves and I have some shortening so it doesn't stick. And I have this little candy mat here and I will link everything in the description for you. And I also have a fan set up ready to be turned on to help me cool off that sugar. And also a little bit of super red so I can color it red. So now you're just gonna let this sit and come to a boil. You wanna see that thermometer go up to that hard crack stage. I'm using a teeny, teeny bit of purple coloring to cancel out the yellow that happens in the sugar once it gets really hot. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the red. I think I added a little too much red, but whatever, it's fine. You don't need too much. It colors it really quickly. So once it gets to the hard crack stage, I'm going to pour that on the mat and it is very hot. See, I have the fan on and it's blowing. You, you might be able to see the steam <laughs> and you want to make sure you get some Crisco shortening on that spatula so it doesn't stick and it is too hot to touch. Even with gloves on, do not touch the sugar. It is 360 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So you need to get it to cool a little bit before you start to handle it. So I don't want it to just cool sitting on the mat. So I'm trying to get it into a little ball here. That's why I have that Crisco on the blade there. And I just put a little bit more on there so the sugar won't stick to it. So I just keep trying to pull this into a little ball. That fan is on high and it's just blowing onto that sugar to cool it off. And you see how it's not as hot and it's not as like soft and spreadable right now. It's starting to get sticky. Good. And now it's holding together on a ball and look out, ow, ow, hot. It's hot. <laughs> so get some Crisco shortening in my hands and gather that into a little ball. And now I'm going to wrap this around that, uh, that dowel. And this is the part that's a pain in the butt because it, you, I have to keep moving it around. I want it to come out at the bottom. I keep turning it upside down and right side up to try to get this in the right position. And it is still hot. So I can barely touch it with my hands, but I have that fan on there again. And I want to spread it out on the bottom. And I just keep like, do you see how I'm turning it upside down? Because if I hold it right side up, it starts to sink down the dowel. So I turn it upside down and then I right side up and I'm just trying to keep it in the right position. You see, I have the fan on it and I try to pull 
a tail on the very top so that the bottle can slide down. So I'm squeezing it in the middle to give it a little bit more shape. And I just, that bottom part is, is going to touch the cake. So I kind of want it flat there, but I want it to spread out like I'm pouring, you know, a liquid drink out there. See how I'm pressing it down on that styrofoam block to flatten it out because it's going to touch the cake there. And there it goes, looks good. And I'm going to slide that on there and that's how it's going to look on the cake. Now I want to cut out the edible images. So I already printed these and stored these in here. I have a video showing you how I use my edible printer and I will link that in the description, but I always store them in these silver envelopes that the icing sheets come in. Always save those envelopes because you can store your printed images in there until you're ready to use them. My yellow cartridge was not working because it printed white. So I had to unclog my cartridge and I have a video showing you how I do that in case your colors are not printing vibrantly. I will link that below as well. So I am going to cut these out. And what I like to do is cut a thin white border around the entire piece. And I'm going to do that for all three of them. And then I'm going to flip them upside down on a paper towel. And I rolled out some white fondant, pretty thin. I'm going to get a little piping gel on a brush and I'm painting piping gel on the back of each piece going past the edge onto the um, onto the paper towel to make sure that I cover the entire thing. Curve it as you put it down so no air bubbles are going to form behind that and do that for all three pieces. And then I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and just cut all of them out and make sure you smooth the fondant after you cut it out so everything is nice and pretty. And do that for all three of them. And that looks good. Let's set those aside to dry. I got this out of the fridge and I flip those upside down so the fondant can dry really hard and those can stand straight on their own. I'm measuring the name to see where the center letter is. The center is the K. So I have a little bit of piping gel and I'm gonna get that behind there. And I'm gonna stick this to the cake. You see how I have that black marker on the cake board marking the center and I'm sticking the K right there in the middle. And then when I put names on cakes, I like to build out to the side. So I start in the center and then I build out to the right and I build out to the left to make sure the entire thing is in the center of the cake. And then I can use my fingers to adjust these in the right position before that piping gel really starts to hold it onto the cake. Now, how do I wanna put these on here? I don't know. <laughs> so they dried really hard. They dried overnight. Do I want the eight over there or do I want the eight in the middle? I don't know. I think I like the eight on the right and having all three on the left. So those dried really hard overnight so they can stand on their own. And I'm just getting a little bit of piping gel behind them where they're going to touch the cake. And for this one that's sitting in front, I'm getting a little bit of icing in the middle and then a little bit of piping gel on the sides just to help it stick a little bit better so it doesn't fall off of those other two pieces. And then same thing for the number eight, get a little piping gel behind it and stick that to the fondant. And then I can stick this down in the center. It's actually a little bit off to the right of that dowel that I put in there. And then wrapping the ribbon around the cake board, getting some non-toxic glue down. I got glue behind the back of the ribbon and then stick that together and use my finger one time for good measure to press it down against the cake. And then this needs curlies. I have a video where I show you how to make curlies and I always save extras. So because I'm addicted and I can't stop using them. <laughs> so I'm just finding the colors of the cake and then I'm getting a little bit of piping gel behind them and sticking them down to the board and down to that uh, top tier. And there is the cake, how cool is that? So there you go, how cool is this prime drink cake? And I have to say, I don't work with sugar a lot. I do have a video where I talk about, where I show you in more detail on how to make a beer pouring out of a can. And it's the same technique, I just dyed the sugar a different color. But I know I quickly explained it in this video, so that video goes into deeper detail. Now, it is an older video, and I don't know why I always do this, but it's an older video, so it's not, I wasn't as good at making videos back then, but you can get the gist of it if you want to um, go, go into a little more detail on how I do that sugar beer or sugar liquid. Now with the sugar in the summertime, and I don't know how to avoid this, it does get a little sticky, which isn't that bad because it helps the bottle to stick to it. 
However, I don't work with sugar too much, so I'm not sure what to recommend to keep it from getting sticky because if it's humid out, it's gonna get sticky. So if anybody out there knows any tips to help prevent the sugar from getting sticky, please leave them in the comments below. So I showed in the video how I work with edible images and I have a bunch of videos uh, talking about how to use your edible image printer, how to, how to unclog it, how to work with the cartridges, all of that will be linked in the description. And I get all of my supplies from icing images. I love icing images and I've been shopping there for many years and I recently became affiliated with them. So I'm gonna put my affiliate link in the description if you wanna check them out. They do have printer bundles. So if you are just getting started, you can buy a bundle that has the printer, the cartridges, the icing paper, the cleaning kit, like all that stuff is gonna be included so you have everything you need to start printing edible images. Now this cake is, the top tier is five inch and the bottom tier is seven inches and it feeds about 25 to 30 people. So I think that's it. What new techniques did you learn in this video? I would love to know, leave them in the comments below. And just a reminder, I have my favorite numbers PDF and also my sacred pound cake, delicious pound cake recipe book that are available and I will link them in the description for you. Please like this video if you liked it and if you're enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is pinned in the comments below. And you can keep in touch on socials and check out my website, everything's listed in the description. And if you wanna stick around, you can watch this video next. Why do I say it like that? And hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake, have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.